Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and welcome to my stop in the not too shabby 10k subscriber giveaway hop. I hope you'll stick around, see which sponsor I'm going to feature and find out how you can win some of the $400 in prizes. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm super excited that Jamie of the Not Too Shabby Shop asked me to help her celebrate her 10,000 subscriber on the Not Too Shabby channel. Not only does she make and sell her own products, of which I get to design some, but she also carries many other companies. As you hop along in the celebration, you're going to see many of those companies featured in videos and they even have some prizes that they have sponsored. I will tell you all about the prizes and how you can enter to win when we get into the process, but for now I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be featuring some Cat Scrappiness products. Cat Scrappiness makes their own stamps, dies, and lots of fun embellishments, and Jamie sells some of those in her shop. Speaking of that, I do have the Not Too Shabby online store linked in the description box below and there is a 10% off coupon that you can use on most items. I hope you'll check that out when you're done here. For my card today, I will be making a slimline card and I thought since this was a celebration, that is the theme that I would go with for my card. I will be using the Cat Scrappiness Condensed Lowercase Alphabet Dies. I love the size of these, but because they're skinny, you can fit a lot of letters in a little space. I'll also be using the Valentine Kawaka Stamp Set, but I'm going to be using it in a unique way, and I hope that you'll like that. As I start the process, I will tell you about any other tools or products that I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! As I mentioned before, the theme of today's card is celebration, and I want to die cut the word celebrate to have it go across my card front. So for this, I did need a longer card, so I cut and folded myself a slimline card base that ends up being 8.5 inches wide by 3.5 inches tall. Now I need a piece to stamp onto and to die cut my words from, so that leftover piece of white from the letter size cardstock, I cut down to 3 by 8. I then brought in a scrap of black cardstock and I cut that down for a mat at eight and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Now we're going to do the stamping. I got out a rainbow of inks from my stash and I will list each individual color in the description box. And for my stamp set today, I'm actually not going to use the front or the image part of the stamp. I'm going to be flipping it over and using the back. So if you're going to do something like this, you want to make sure that your image is kind of flowy and blob-like. I know some of you like that word from my stamp and stencil bundle, but you wouldn't want to use something like a sentiment where it's blocky and rectangular. So I thought the back of the little quokka holding the heart envelope was a great option for this. Now to figure out where I wanted to stamp, I did put one of the letter dies onto the piece of cardstock. Got a good idea for placement and now I'm gonna get some color added to this card. After I had the stamp upside down on the clear block I brought in the red ink to get started. I did go ahead and test this just off on that scrap of white to see what I thought and just so you know you're not going to get a perfect image on this it will be kind of splotchy but that adds to kind of the abstract feel of this piece. Once I knew the red would work, I stamped it onto my piece of cardstock and I did have it hang off the left there just a little bit. 
Now in hindsight, I should have probably put some ink underneath that red, like maybe some Versamark to help with the staining. But even though my stamp is red now, it does not affect any of the stamping later. I continued with each of the colors of the rainbow, making sure to clean it well between each color. And then when I got to the end, I was originally gonna stop with purple, but there was still a little white space left. So I ended up bringing in, I think it's passionate pink, and I finished up the right side. One thing I have forgotten to mention is as I was stamping, I did rotate and angle that stamp differently just to get various shapes across the card front. Now we're going to die cut the word celebrate into the piece that I just stamped. I went ahead and pulled out all the letters for the word celebrate. And so I would have placeholders as I laid them out. I did find two more letters that were the same size as the E. Now I'm not sure why I held those up to the S at first, but the S and the E are the same size as well. To line these up and get them nice and straight, I brought in a scrap of press and seal and I put the sticky side up on this piece of graph paper. Now what I do, because I will have to flip the word over eventually for die cutting, you do need to reverse the word. So make sure you do that first. And then I start placing the dies onto the press and seal. I try to pick a line on the graph paper and make sure that the bottom of my die is always sitting right on that line. I try to keep them as straight up and down as possible and keep the spacing between each die even as I go along with the word. As I'm working on getting all of those letters straight and in a line, I thought it would be a great time for me to tell you about this giveaway. Jamie is celebrating 10,000 subscribers on her Not Too Shabby channel and wanted to celebrate in a huge way. And wow has she ever. There are 10 stops on this hop and 10 sponsors with over $400 in prizes. So make sure that you follow the instructions I'm going to give you and better your chance to win some of them. Now up on screen now is a graphic with all of the sponsors. You can see so many fabulous companies, including Jamie's own Not Too Shabby shop. What you'll need to do to enter is be a subscriber of the Not Too Shabby channel. And if you're not already, I hope you will definitely get over there and do that right away. You will then visit each creator on the hop, and I do have the link to the next person in line at the top of my description box. And when you're there, after you're done watching their entire video, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and hey, if you like what you see, I know they'll appreciate a follow if you don't already. Each comment will get you an entry into the drawing for that channel. So like for mine, since it's sponsored by Cat Scrappiness, if you win from my comments, you will get their prize. So you wanna make sure to get to all of the videos to have more chances to win. And if you do comment on every single video, you can enter a special raffle copter for an extra $50 gift certificate opportunity from Not Too Shabby. I do have the raffle copter linked below, as well as all of the instructions how to participate. I hope you have fun hopping around, being inspired, and good luck in the giveaway. After all of the dies were in place, I brought back in my stamped piece and using the press and seal, I placed it onto the card front where I wanted it to cut out and I did make sure to take out the placeholder dies before running it through the die cutter. Definitely don't forget to do that. I still needed to do a little more die cutting since I need two more E's in Celebrate. So to help line up the E, I placed the die that was the letter before it back in its spot. That way I know where the bottom part of my metal piece of the E needs to go. Once I have that in place, I just run it back through the die cutter and set it up for that final E in Celebrate. 
Off screen, I did die cut a set of the letters in black because once I get my celebrate piece onto my black cardstock mat, I want to have a smooth surface all the way across it to set up the rest of my card. Now to get the celebrate onto the cardstock, I used a combination of ATG and wet glue because I wanted to get in on the little spaces of those letters so they wouldn't get caught and pull up later. After the stamp piece had dried, I then brought in my black letters and just like a puzzle, I filled in the word celebrate, making sure to put in the colorful centers that I had kept from when I die cut the first word. To get some separation between the background and the die cut letters, you could use something like fun foam and die cut each letter again, or even foam tape. For myself, I decided that I was going to use a piece of vellum. I cut this at seven and three quarters by two and three quarters, and to adhere it to the card front, since I have a nice flat surface, I put liquid glue on each of the black letters in the word. Then I set that to the side for about five minutes to dry. Once it had dried, I then placed my colorful letters onto the vellum. I did my best to line them up with the black letters underneath, and once again I gave that about 5 minutes to dry before moving on. To finish this card off and add a little sparkle, I used the Sparkling Snow Pearl Mix from Cat Scrappiness and placed a few just across the front of the card. To do this, I put down dots of glue, let them get a little bit tacky, and then brought in my jewel picker to place a pearl onto each one of those. And here is a close-up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card and maybe got a couple tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit the next person on the hop. Her link is at the very top of my description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.